You may have heard about life's ups and downs, and maybe thought it would look like this. However, as we are complex creatures, and our lives are even more complicated than just a single line representing our ups and downs, I believe the chart should look like this instead. There are indeed many intricate lines that represent many aspects of our lives. Now, let me ask you, have you ever gone through so many downs at once that you felt it could last forever? Considering the current COVID-19 pandemic as an example, I am sure many people have experienced such a thing, and I experienced that too at a very young age. So today, I would like to share with you the strategies that helped me get through it, and I hope they help you survive even if the downs have lasted for too long. I formulated these strategies in what I call the Perseverance Triangle. So, how did I come up with this? Well, it all started back in 2009, when I had to face a chain of traumatic events that affected all possible aspects of my life. First, I got diagnosed with a rare tumor that, as a mother, made me worry not only about my health, but also about the impact of my illness on my kids. Then the recovery was challenging and ended by breaking up my already unhealthy eight years old marriage. And as if that wasn't enough, it was happening at the same time I was pursuing my PhD. Can you imagine? The pressure of performing well in all aspects of my life when everything seemed to be falling apart affected my well-being. Consequently, Chronic stress and panic attacks were my companions throughout that journey. I felt like my life was a roller coaster without breaks, exhausting me to the extent that I almost gave up on many, things, on many things in my life. During those difficult times, I constantly wished if we could control the order in which difficulties occur in our lives so that we can at least handle each separately. However, what I then learned, and now I would like to share with you as my first strategy, is that taking care of our well-being is a thousand times more rewarding than trying to control our difficulties. And what helps in that is focusing the mind into controlling our critical inner voice. The critical inner voice is the sum of the destructive thoughts within our heads about ourselves and others. According to the PsychLive report, this critical inner voice could be the most challenging internal enemy that we deal with daily. It affects us by undermining our positive feelings about ourselves and others, which of course affects many aspects of our lives, including our self-esteem, relationships, and even our professional performance. Humans start forming their critical inner voices early in life when they are exposed to positive and negative feedback experiences from their environment. For example, when they are criticized, bullied, or harassed for their appearance, their performance, or even their intelligence. Then the, these, these feedback experiences accumulate within their heads. And that is why these voices do not necessarily represent them. In fact, in many cases, they become a reflection on how they think others perceive them. So how can we control our critical inner voice? The first step is to be aware and receptive of those thoughts. Then, create a record of such events. For example, whenever a negative thought pops up, write it down along with the emotions that came with those voices. Then, Try to consciously identify the sources, the motives, and the feelings that those voices are triggering. And the last and most important step is to replace them with positive thoughts and experiences from your life. And remember, even though you are the sole owner of your thoughts, having a positive and reliable support system, such as family members or friends or even professional help, could be very helpful in the process of empowering your positive inner voice. 
Moving on to the second strategy, which is to create a survivability chart. This strategy was suggested by my counselor, who was advising me during the most stressful days of my PhD. As things were getting pretty much complicated at that time, um, I thought of compromising with my PhD to be able to handle my other hardships. So I went to him and said, I am quitting. Please help me sort it out. But the only thing he told me at that moment was, I am not going to help you quit. Go home, take a rest, and I'll see you in the next visit. So when I came back in the next meeting, he had created a big poster size chart where we would track and review my survivability. So the chart looked like this. I used to check it with my counselor on a weekly basis, and at each time, I rated my survivability on a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 means that I am burnt out, and 10 means that I'm not stressed. In addition, I incorporated any positive, big or small, achievements or experiences that would help me keep motivated. Then we discussed how I managed to get through those difficult experiences. And during this questioning process, I realized how strong and resilient I was to be able to survive even when I was almost burnt out. This strategy, in the end, helped me successfully graduate from my PhD while still having to go through other life challenges at the same time. The third and final strategy is to set achievable goals. You know how everyone is hung up on their long-term goals. But for someone who's going through traumatic experiences, long-term goals are a luxury. In fact, if you set long-term goals for yourself while trying to survive, you may be setting yourself up for failure. And that is why what I'm recommending here instead is to set short and medium-term goals. And in my case, I listed goals to be achieved on a daily or weekly basis. For example, instead of saying as a goal to get a job in one of the biggest companies in the country after graduation, I converted that goal into a set of medium-term goals that included, for example, to invest in my leadership and management skills. And that medium goal was again translated into a bunch of short-term goals that included, for example, to register to a Six Sigma course. So registering to a course is less scary than getting the big job now and less likely to affect my daily survivability. This strategy helped me focus on the now and my daily achievements rather than the big obstacles. And let me tell you here, even though there were days where I felt really exhausted and doubted that I could continue, however, the only constant thing I kept doing was to focus on achieving my next immediate goal. That's it. I only focused on my next immediate goal. So, I survived the next day, then the day after, then the week after, until I managed to survive the whole rough period with great success. I successfully graduated from my PhD, I got the job, and my health and family were stable. Seeing my short-term goals in front of me every day, along with my daily achievements and survivability, helped me construct the basis to achieve my long-term goals without even noticing. I couldn't be prouder. So there you have it. These are the three main components of my perseverance triangle. And I would like to end here by saying, for those of you who are going through difficulties, remember that we gain our strength from our hardships. And one day, you'll be very proud of how you managed to survive your downs. So, my advice to you is to invest in your well-being by empowering your positive inner voice, if possible with the help of a wisely selected support system. Also, utilize a survivability chart strategy that suits you best and helps you keep tracking your progress step by step. And lastly, set achievable goals that will help you keep, keep moving 
forward. As Albert Einstein said, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.